start with Denny. Denny was a classic ground out win. Yeah, it was a tough game. It was a really tough game. I thought um, second half in particular, I thought first half was pretty even. Um, but uh, we came under pressure. I thought we defended our goal really well. Uh, the great response, really, to, to going uh, one all from the players, from the, the guys that came on the pitch, and to find a way to win. It, it's, it's so difficult to win in this league, especially if you're not at your absolute best, so we're finding a way to do it. So that's great signs, but we know that... Um, Longer term, we're going to need to improve our performance. How important was it to get a positive result after the last few weeks and the, the, the sort of narrative that's been around? <laughs> well, it's massive, isn't it? I mean, you need to win um, at any stage, but I think when when there's difficult moments and this transfer window has been tough for us, I think it's even more important because it it just enables you to see things clearly and to to move forward with positive momentum. Hopefully, we can do that. Um, today was a tough game, but we, as I say, we found a way to grind out a win, and hopefully that's good signs for the rest of the season. <coughs> George Cole. Hi. Yeah, that, that well, I think it does because we know most transfer windows are shut, so I think it gives us some stability and a lot of the off field talk can hopefully disappear and we can focus on the pitch and the players that matter um, and we can try and get ourselves in a really good place. I think what this does do hopefully will give us confidence and give us the ability to see ourselves as a, a very good team, one that can get better and improve as the season goes on. I still think we're short fitness wise, I think that's clear to see. We've got a lot of work to do in the international break with the players that stay. Yeah, it is, because you need the players to believe in themselves and you need the players to believe in the changing room and the ability that we have. I think they do, um, but we've still got a number of players that can make a big difference out injured and that is always a challenge. You can see today that was every player that was fit and available was on the bench, was involved, we've got no one else, senior professionals, so it's a really small squad, but in some senses that small squad fosters team spirit and togetherness and that's what we try to do. Okay, of course, to Dominic and then uh, to the front of Luke. So you bring him back to transfers, I mean, you just mentioned most windows are closed, obviously some are still open, is there still a chance some players to leave? Um, yeah, maybe the the players that have been linked to move, like Jamal Lewis, could possibly leave. But certainly, we hope no one else does. Four games into the season, four games unbeaten, other team, although maybe shortcomings fitness-wise, playing how you like to at this stage. No, I don't think we're playing as as we would like. I think that's obvious. I don't think we're playing with enough control. I don't think we're playing with enough composure. But. Um, what we are showing is the defensive and um, aggressive qualities that you need. But I have to say we're defending very well. When you look at how much ball Tottenham had around our box today, I thought the back four in particular and Nick were magnificent in repelling their threat. Made some really good defensive actions. Um, but on the ball, I think we've got a lot of work to do. Our attacking play is not kicked into rhythm yet. But in saying that today, I still thought we could score at any stage of the game. And before they scored, I thought we missed a great chance to go 2-0. Very similar to the goal that we did score um, when Jacob makes that brilliant pass to Alex. And, um, I still I thought we looked an attacking threat while not having a lot of the ball. Jack, Scott to Luke, Craig, and then Scott. Watching Anthony Gordon quite closely today, what's what's the kind of issue with him? Is it is it a lack of fitness at the moment? Yeah, I think Anthony's had a. Um, an unusual summer by his standards, a long stretch at the Euros uh, where he didn't play. So naturally, I think that's a long period without game sharpness and everything that you need to get. Then he comes in for us, he has a two-week pre-season. Pre-seasons are usually five to six weeks. So I think it's clear that Anthony's slightly off on his, um, on his fit normal fitness levels, um, especially where he was last year, where he worked tirelessly to get into the best physical shape he could be. Um, and at the moment, we're trying to get him fit in the games. We're trying to leave him on the pitch as long as we can, knowing that we can't really train him because we got we had a busy spell. So 
He's getting his fitness from the matches, which is never ideal. But he will be fine. Um, touch wood, as long as he stays injury free, uh, we get him up to speed quickly. You missed a lot of players last season. We all know that, but perhaps none of them more than just Nick Pope. Yeah, I think you can see that today. I mean, his ability to keep the ball out of the net is unrivaled, in my opinion. He is an incredible shot stopper. He fills the goal. Um, a couple of the saves he made today, I thought, were incredible. Typical Nick like. Um, and I just think he gives everyone around him confidence. So you can't underestimate the power of your goalkeeper. Uh, we certainly don't. And that's no, like Martin did a really good job for us last year. But Nick has unique skills, as Martin does. And um, it was a great performance from him today. Craig? Eddie, there was a Saudi contingent there today. Have you had a chance to speak with them? And if so, what's the, what's the message for you? Thankfully, no. As in, I don't have to answer your question. Uh, but I hope to catch up with them after this. When we last spoke on Friday morning, there was still 12 hours in the window to go. You said you answered our questions then, but now you've had 36 hours to reflect on what happened or what didn't happen. Where are you at in terms of that? Can you give us your sort of summary of the window? Challenging. In one word? Loads, if you want. No, no, one, one word's good. <laughs> Challenge, yeah, challenging because we, we knew going into the window it was going to be challenging and it proves no different. Um, and that, I do say, repeat myself because it's the only thing I can do is tell you my, my feelings is that that would be the same for everyone connected with the club. There's no one in a different position who's connected with the club that's wanting to do as good a job as we all can and try and improve the squad. It was challenging, um, but by not spending... Uh, any money, I say any money, we did, we did spend a bit of money, but by not spending the sums that maybe was expected, hopefully that helps us in future windows. I don't know as I sit here today, but hopefully that gives us a bit more freedom in the future to uh, be a bit more proactive. Thank you. Scott? Um, sorry, it seems like these transfer questions don't want to end, so I apologize. But Kieran Trivia, there has been talk today of supporters of Turkish interest, that window is still got two weeks. I mean, is there, is there anything changed in his situation with you, or is, are you still very much firm that, that you want Kieran Trivia here until January at the very least? Yeah, absolutely, I want Kieran here. Um, that hasn't changed and that won't change. Now, I woke up to sort of the stories via a few messages, as you do. Um, so it's the first I'd heard of it. And, you know, when we talk about players coming into the team, um, and, you know, we saw it last season where, where players had to, to do that. I mean, Emil, the, the role that he's played in Fabian's absence, I guess, shows that while you have got a, a small squad, the importance of those type of players to be able to do that is going to be massive, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think what it does do when you, I said earlier that everyone who was fit today is involved is highlights how important every single player is. And we have to get, as I said yesterday, we have to get the best out of every single individual. And you look at Emil as a, uh, as a player, he's never really played centre-half in a back four before. I don't believe, he might say different, but I, I don't believe he has. I've not seen him do it. He certainly played in a back three before, but a back four to a back three is totally different. He has done brilliantly in Fabian's absence, I have to say. I think he's very, very dependable. Um, first and foremost, he's a great character. He wants to play for Newcastle. He's absolutely motivated to improve. Uh, full credit to him. Okay, we've got to Mark at Lee. We'll finish with Aaron, please. Eddie, we're not used to seeing Newcastle teams kind of. Uh, it's two games now, but anyway, you've probably not had much possession. You've probably not. We stepped off a little bit more than we ever seen before. That's not like a deliberate mm -hmm. thing, is it? It's more to do with losing the first game, but also maybe it's not been quite fit. Has that been fair? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that is fair to say. I mean, you say you, you've not seen Newcastle teams before that I have. Um, no, not seen your, your oh, my team. teams. Not, yeah, not no, but, but, the, but there'd be games where we've had to do that. We've had to do that. Um, the plan today was a mixture, a mixture in our game. As I said before, I think after the Wolves game here last year, we change our tactical plan, whether people see it or not, regularly. We don't just have one way of playing and that's it. We're, we're constantly changing. You have to because the opposition you're playing against um, are different as well every game. So the plan was to be not without the ball as long as we were today. But we knew there would be spells where we, we wouldn't have it. Um, but in some respects, that doesn't damage us. We're a very good counter-attacking team, so we're quite prepared to be in that moment. 
But longer term, we know we need more of the ball and we will endeavour to have more of the ball. Um, certainly that isn't a, something that we plan to go into any game planning to be without the ball for long periods. But sometimes that happens, you have to suffer that um, while trying to find a way to win. Just finally, Harvey Barnes, um, because we didn't see that much of him last season because he's injured and stuff. It's looked really good so far this season. Yeah, it was a brilliant goal. It was a typical Harvey finish, really. I think he has the ability to not just finish really well, but just take up great positions to score goals. You look at his record, it is incredible for a wide player at this level. So, um, really pleased for him. He's fighting for a place in the team. That will only inspire us. You see Jacob Murphy's contribution when he came on with a brilliant assist. So, uh, that's good to see. Lee Ryder. Eddie, it sounds like you Looking forward to being in charge of your own destiny in some ways now because the window's shut, you get on the training field and the results are the, probably the only way to respond sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's the only way I know. I mean, the transfer side of football now is so big that you can't, as a manager, control all of that. You're very much concentrating on your own job, which is coaching, training, style, which we're working towards. Um, but you know how important the transfer window is to everything that you do and your future success depends on how successful you are in the window. So, as I said earlier, hopefully it gives us a bit more freedom in future windows. Just on the sort of togetherness of the team, see you had the owners here today, that, that, I suppose that's got to drive you forward now, between now and January. The togetherness? Yeah. I think it always drives me forward. Uh, I think when I come to work every day and you're interacting with the staff and the players that we have here, it's a, an absolute privilege and a pleasure to, to be with them all. I think we have a great team spirit, it's something that we have to protect at all costs and in part that go, does go back to the transfer when we have to bring the right characters to the group. Um, the characters we've brought in so far have, have helped us get where we are. Okay. Aaron, to finish. Hi, um, Sam, I just saw a lot of support. Yeah, I didn't know what was going to happen, so the, the War Flags display was a, a brilliant surpri surprise when I walked out. Um, I, visually, it was incredible. I'm sure Sandro, well, I could see Sandro, who cause he was near me, was emotionally moved. Brilliant. I thought his performance when he came on was outstanding. He helped um, us in a moment of need. Um, just amazing from the supporters, and again, it doesn't surprise me, but it is so important that relationship between players and supporters is strong. And that's something, again, that we have to take ownership of as, as from our side and make sure we're giving our all every time we wear the shirt. And now that we've seen the two games, how far away do you think it's physically from sort of breaking especially? Like a number of our players, I think be, he's got some work to do. Um, but uh, he'd be pleased, with, I think, with two contributions. The contribution he made on Wednesday, which was really good. Um, and today, again, Premier League game, very different to the Nottingham Forest game when he came onto the pitch we were in need of a spark and I felt with the other substitutes I thought he, he gave us that. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Thank, you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.